Hi, I'm Mitch Gross, the Cinema Product Manager at Panasonic in North America. This is the new EVA-1 camera, AU-EVA-1, but we like to call her EVA. The EVA-1 camera is a Super 35 sensor camera that actually is not 4K, it's a 5.7K camera. That sensor at 5.7K will yield a very high quality 4K image. So it'll record 4K up to 60 frames per second or 2K HD up to 240 frames per second. It can do 422 10-bit recording. It can have different record codecs that we have available in the camera. All of that will go to little SD cards on the back of the camera that there are two slots, so you could record two copies of the identical thing uh, simultaneously, or you can do continuous recording forever, how long you could stand to do it. The camera has 14 stops of dynamic range, and our E gamut, which is a color space that is beyond Rec 2020. So this camera is fully ready to deliver uh, 4K HDR imagery. You can get high frame rates, you can get high resolution, you can get a wide dynamic range, and a very wide color gamut. It borrows from some of our bigger cameras, such as the Vericam line. One of them is something called Dual Native ISO. Dual Native ISO is technology that's actually built into the sensor. We build our own camera sensors. So what we get are two different native sensitivities of the camera that you can switch between. Think of switching a film stock on an old film camera. So you have 800 ISO and you have 2500 ISO. Now from either of those, we can gain up and down as we wish. We can go down to 100 ISO, we can go all the way up to 25,600 ISO. So we have a huge range available, but at our two different native ISOs, we get our full 14 stops to dynamic range, we don't get any shift in noise level, we don't have weird color shifts, we don't have any of those issues that can be associated with doing extremes in uh, gain control. Right here, just our NDs, which are are two stop, four stop, six stop, and it's just a push button to reach it. You can also, with that same motor mechanism on another button, you could choose to have your IR filter cut be swung out of the way of the sensor. Every digital sensor has an IR protection so that you don't get a lot of heat giving you like weird purpley kind of images and such. Well, we have that on a motor, so that'll just swing out of the way if you choose to, and now you have an infrared shooting camera, so you can uh, do interesting visual effects or do night vision type of photography. There's also something called focus squares. It's a function where you say, well, this camera can shoot really high resolution images, but how do I know when I'm in focus? You know, it's hard to see on the small screens. You know, even if I have a portable monitor, well, focus squares, it's sort of a grid that comes up on the screen, and the more something is in focus on one part of the image, the larger the squares will be on that part of the frame as opposed to other parts. It's sort of a topographical map, if you will, of the picture. And you can switch that on and off on the fly. You can have our regular focus assist functions. We do have an autofocus mode in here. It's a very petite size, and it only weighs uh, 2.65 pounds. So this top handle can come off. There's a side grip that can come off. It uses a small battery block in there. So it can go really petite, great for using on drones or uh, on gimbals or squeezing into a car rig inside the space or whatever you might need to use that for. It's a very portable, flexible camera device. It has not only this LCD output, but it has an HDMI output, which can do 4K up to 60 frames per second, and an SDI output, which can do 4K up to 30 frames per second, or HD up to 60. And we will enable, in early 2018, that SDI output to also output raw data. So you'll be able to get 5.7K up to 30 frames a second, or 4K up to 60 frames in uncompressed raw data. So that you can go really high quality image that you just can't get otherwise. There's also an, a, a, uh, an output or an input output for time code so that you'll be able to marry this with other cameras or with a separate audio system and be able to have everything all in sync, which frankly I feel is crazy that all cameras don't have that. Difference. But certainly you can have that on cameras of this scale and size and this price range from other manufacturers. That's a unique feature of this camera. Uh, all those outputs, they're all available all the time. Even when you record, you don't switch one off for another and stuff. And lastly, it's a really pretty picture. This camera borrows the Vericam look. So 
it, in fact, it's designed so that you can match this camera with a Vericam, which is our beautiful highest end cameras that really everyone loves the look of them. If you shoot this in log mode, you shoot a Vericam in log mode, you can use the exact same LUDs or the same color corrections in post on one as you would on the other. So you can apply the exact same settings and they will match out because that is the design for them to be a family of cameras that work together so you can have multiple cameras on set and they'll intercut. So beyond all those other things I've spent the last few minutes talking to you about, if a camera doesn't shoot a pretty picture, then who cares? This shoots a very attractive image. This is the EVA1. It is shipping in just a couple of weeks from now ship at the end of October and there's more information about it on the Panasonic website.